Hello and a warm welcome to Battleground Chhattisgarh. Our Battleground series will get you a special election programming over the next one month. I'm Neelu Vyas. BJP today released its election manifesto of Chhattisgarh, calling it a Sankalp Patra, and has promised that the state will be developed along the lines of the vision of party's first Prime Minister, Atal Bihari Vajpayee. The main opponent, Congress, has also made tall promises to assure the voters of their vision and form of governance they will give if they come to power. So what do the BJP and Congress manifestos have to offer? How workable are they? And what are the fulfilled and unfulfilled promises? And will they translate into votes? That's the million dollar question. Joining me now, Sudesh Varma, BJP spokesperson. Next to him is Pranav Jha, spokesperson Congress. And next to her, next to him is Aditi Fadnas, political editor, Business Standard. I welcome all of you on this uh, special battle, battleground series. And to start with you, Sudesh, first, that you call the party's manifesto as the Sankalp Patra, whereas Congress calls it a Jan Ghoshana Patra. I'm going to come to Congress a little later. But looking at your Sankalp Patra, how hopeful are you that the people on the basis of this manifesto which has come out are going to vote for the BJP government? Uh, Nilish J, you see, we are in power there. So it's but natural that we'll go to the people with our achievements. Uh, and there are a number of achievements which we can list, you know, which we have been saying during the campaign. So the government has to continue doing that good work and also address those areas of concerns which have come up, like, say, entrepreneurship development. In that, we have said that we'll be giving interest-free loans. We are saying that we'll give books free of course to up to class 12 students. Such things, you know, which are just minor adjustments. We are already, uh, to the farmers, we are giving interest-free loans to farmers. And we are procuring from farmers at an MSP, which is one of the highest in the country. And the farmers are very happy. You see, Chhattisgarh is a power surplus state. Chhattisgarh is, you know, uh, rich in mineral. You have cement hub there. Uh, you have industrial hub. So Chhattisgarh is not the Chhattisgarh which you visualized 15 years back or Absolutely. 20 years back. It's now a progressive state. You have yeah. airports there. In fact, uh, yeah, we, we will come to these uh, nitty-gritties a little later during the program. But uh, there is no doubt that Chhattisgarh has progressed in the last 15 years under Raman Singh government. But the million-dollar question which I want to pose to Congress at the moment is that Congress actually has not come out with anything new if I look at uh, the Jan Ghoshna Patra which has been released by your party. Uh, you don't have anything new. Already what is existent and what, what has already been done by the BJP government, it's almost like a similar copy of, of the BJP's document. Uh, that's not uh, entirely fair, uh, Nilu. Uh, to mm, give credit to my friend, that he said that they, they have tried to do and they'll continue. There are schemes which have done well on the ground uh, for Raman Singh and for people of Chhattisgarh. But in, you have to take in account that the government has been there for the last 15 years in the state. And yet, I was looking at the poverty data, 60% of the st uh, state's population is still below poverty line. It's right. one of the richest state in the country, mineral wealth wise. But the poverty index is really bad. Unemployment rate it's at the moment the highest in the country, uh, nationally I'm saying, but for Chhattis, that's around 6.7 percent, the uh, rate of joblessness, but for Chhattisgarh it's 22 percent. Where, where the government has failed is that they have done few schemes like rice, uh, PDS is a, uh, partly is a good scheme, but there is a huge 36,000 crore scam brewing up, where names of the chief minister and his wife have dropped up. That's another issue. So, what I'm saying that Forest Right Act, which was meant to cater to the Adivasis, landless people, uh, there were around 8 lakh claimants, out of which 4, 4, 4 lakh and 5, uh, 50,000 people have been denied, uh, they have been disenfranchised. So, the damage that, that have been done, uh, mineral wealth have been given to, uh, as Rahul Gandhi keeps saying in his speeches, that the 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 benefit of the governance has gone to few people in in few hands rather than uh, to the people there are 60000 teachers vacancy waiting they are not uh, employing i don't know why aren't they doing a permanent uh, uh, appointment they are just contractual appointment so i mean 65% uh, of the uh, land is unirrigated they have done uh, um, uh, good work in in terms of water preservation but it's focused 
at few people at the segment which is already empowered which already has wealth in its hand it is not for people uh, a government meant to benefit people at large right. I'll, I'll, that, I'll come to sudesh I'll that is to, the challenge of the I'll government i'll come to also. sudesh on these uh, questions which you have asked but let me lay, take in a quick comment from aditi yeah. uh, when you uh, take a comparative look of uh, the the two documents which have come out by congress and bjp what is your uh, feeling i mean can Congress really convince the voters that look, this is the party now you need to vote. Three terms of Raman Singh government are done, and now we are a credible alternative. Is that document offering that alternative to the people at the moment? I don't know if the people will take that document as seriously as we take it. Okay, but uh, we just have to remember that in the last election, the the person vote percentage uh, of victory between the Congress and the BJP was just 0.7 percent. Right. So the difference was just 0.7%. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very important figure when you consider that, uh, you know, you're uh, staking claim to power. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, poll results that we are seeing, uh, you know, pre-election uh, poll uh, verdicts, uh, those seem to suggest that the vote share difference has increased considerably. Okay. Uh, we have to wait until the final res uh, result of the election to figure that out. But uh, there is no doubt that the common, the problems that Chhattisgarh faces are known to everybody. Uh, there's no mystery about that. Uh, and I think some of the things that the Raman Singh government has, has done are excellent. There's no doubt about that. Right. The PDS scheme is excellent. The resettlement of those who are hit by the left-wing insurgency, uh, the way they have, the children of those, uh, those, uh, those parents have been resettled is excellent. Uh, but there have been no uh, rioting or no communal riots in Chhattisgarh, uh, as far as I can remember. And, uh, and there most is much of the board, to be. Of course, is the development yes. in Bastar. Are and you? and definitely, definitely, new, Naya Raipur is coming up as a fantastically modern city. The roads are broad. The the roundabouts are excellent. The the you know the the, the whole place is is uh, speaks of promise. Right now, but there are un things which have left have been left undone. And uh, one of them is uh, how to reach tribal populations so that <clears throat> left-wing insurgency is right. stamped out completely. Right. You, you made a significant point, and I'll uh, take it forward from where uh, Pranav had, uh, was talking about uh, the poverty uh, figures which he was talking about, Sudesh, that there is no doubt that development is an incremental process. It happens uh, in, in a phased manner, and Raman Singh <laughs> certainly has done a very good job in the last three terms. And as Aditi has already given the verdict that the whole picture looks very promising at the moment. But the poverty figures which Pranav has just stated, uh, in the vision document, in the Sankal Patra which has been released, how are you really tackling the poverty bit of the state? Uh, is it really forward looking? How is the government going to go forward on, the pov on, on fighting okay. poverty? Let me, let me give you a broader picture somewhat in detail so that it will help you to capture what Chhattisgarh is. I as citizen of this country feel very proud when I talk of Chhattisgarh because I have covered this state you know, when it was part of Madhya Pradesh as a journalist I tell you. And today the state is consuming only 30% of the power, 70% is putting it on the national grid. We say that the state has 24 by 7 electricity. Imagine Chhattisgarh is giving electricity power to its citizen 24 by 7 to farmers, to citizens. And, and the state GDP, which is an indicator of growth, if you compare uh, when we came and now uh, election period, is 47,000 crore to 250,000 crore, which is a huge number, you know, phenomenal. And when you talk of RBI, RBI has said uh, not once, many times, there is the best economically governed state. Right. Coming to the issue of poverty, you see, it's not without reason that uh, uh, Raman Singh Ji has uh, given rupees one rise to poor. And it, the scheme is continuously fantastically because it, it's one of the uh, largest rice growing uh, region in this country. And, and the farmers are benefiting because they're getting best price for their produce. Uh, plus the bonus and also uh, the, those who are poor, those who can't afford, they are getting one rupee rice and people are very, he is called Chaur Baba because of that. Absolutely. That you know, people say that oh, he is the one who is giving rice. So Congress has also promised the same thing in their manifesto, but uh, how much I, 
eyes it would cause when they are already getting it, it is a matter to be seen. And you see, uh, for those who are poor, because you must know that this is this body state which has actually been able to overcome malnutrition, which mm. is not there, hunger death, which is not there. Because serpent, they have been given one quintal of rice. If there is destitute family, right. then 20 kg of rice you can give free of cost to uh, that destitute family. So right. this is the way they are tackling poverty. Yes, employment is a problem uh, everywhere. Make in India is happening in Chhattisgarh in a big way. This is going Making to Chattisgarh. create yes. Um, <coughs> It created a big way employment there. We know that, but 75% of the population depends on agriculture even now in Chhattisgarh. Right. That is an area that uh, needs to be taken care of. Okay. Industrialization has to happen more rapidly than uh, we imagine, and those things will be taken care of. And you know that 55 uh, uh, lakhs smartphones are going to be distributed uh, by the government. Uh, Raman Singh Ji has promised in August 2018 mm -hmm. and they are getting done because the smartphone enables you to get into digital uh, mode and once you get into digital then your aspirations, the you know, overall thing rises and this is this vision Absolutely. that we are going to people. I, I, I'll go back to the employment and the poverty bit and uh, what Congress has said in its uh, document. Now you are tackling employment under the party's Ghar Ghar Rozgar, Har Ghar Rozgar scheme. Now, if you have already employment schemes which have been given by the central government, apart from what Raman Singh is, is, is already offering to the people and with the popular sentiment which uh, Raman Singh enjoys, how are you really going to convince the voters that this scheme which you are going to launch will be very convincing and they will go with the Congress? Uh, I'll tell you, Nilud, uh, and for our benefit of our viewers, is that the Congress president believes that farmers are the biggest resource uh, in our society and they need to be mainstream in our economic activity so that both sides benefit because we all eat and farmers produce so the benefit uh, the both sides should come uh, there should be hand holding and part of the scheme is to uh, open uh, uh, what you call food processing centers in 200 uh, blocks but across isn't, the state. isn't central I'm government saying, already offering all that to the farmers? But it hasn't happened. I, I, in fact, I'm coming to the, uh, holistically speaking about the farmers' welfare. Is that uh, my friend Sudesh ji spoke about paddy procurement, saying that they are getting, but he didn't tell you that's half side of the truth. The half side of the truth is that the chief minister had promised 20, 2100 rupees per quintal procurement, whereas what are they getting? 1500. And for the last two years, he'll bear me out, mm -hmm. the bonuses have not been paid. That is part of our uh, uh, Congress's promise. And going forward from there, we are saying we will not give you 2100 rupees, we will give you 2500 rupees per quintal. So that is a lot. And this is addressed to the welfare of the farmers. And uh, when you, when you uh, bring the produce to, to uh, procurement centers, when you uh, uh, may make processing of it and storing and then sending it to the market, then everybody benefits. Now, coming to the second thing, he uh, spoke about electricity is being surplus. I will just like to tell him that it was power surplus in 2000 itself because most of the power uh, generation plants were they, uh, they went into Chhattisgarh side and they were putting it into the national grid in 2000 itself when uh, Ajit Jogi was, uh, uh, Jogi was uh, chief minister. What they could have done is that backward regions grand front which was meant to address left wing, left -wing extremism where these funds were needed to develop uh, the backward area so that the dependence or the poverty could not have compelled those people who take up arms or who rise against the state for which we have uh, uh, proposed 1 crore rupees for each panchayat no, for the can, development but the can fund. congress be dismissive about the things that the naxalism has come down phenomenally there are people who've surrendered they have been mainstreamed by it's the central and the state government it's a continuous process I am saying as long as innocent people are dying, you have failed. It should cease like it ceased in Punjab. To an extent it ceased in Jharkhand. But when you become when you become complacent I, saying I that no, we have eliminated Prime Minister was nearly saying no, it. But no, I'm no. sure Raman Singh is not complacent about this whole thing. Aditi, you I want to get in. No, no, let, 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 let me get in a comment from uh, Aditi on this. Uh, what see, about tackling Naxalism? It's uh, there is no doubt that left-wing extremism, I prefer to call it left-wing extremism, mm. that it continues to, uh, uh, continues to be fostered. And the collateral damage is ordinary innocent people. Right. Right. Uh, there is no doubt that part of the problem is because of the uh, ham-handed way in which successive governments, I am not blaming Congress or BJP, successive governments have followed uh, 
a policy of intruding into tribal areas and uh, you know uh, misbehaving with tribal women uh, alienating their land uh, i mean it's a it's a history we know all that it's a history of uh, of alienation for a long period of time right now raman singh for 15 years has had the the the, the opportunity to uh, change all that uh, if even two people die as a result of collateral damage or if even two people die as a result of maoist or left wing extremism uh, i think it's wrong i think then the government has failed and while he has done a great deal for resettlement and rehabilitation the objective reasons why uh, left left wing extremism exists i think not enough i mean he hasn't done enough to to address yes, that that's the same point and in one line i was saying that if you take up the rights of the adivasis if you take away their right over the forest produce if you take away the right over the land that he has been living on for centuries for three generation the law makes you i mean in, in the pisa which is the panchayati extension uh, um, uh, um, uh, in tribal area it's a it's a way of governance self governance right. i will decide prohibition like one of the provinces of congress <coughs> in panchayat areas where they are tri tribal dominant area the panchayat will themselves decide whether they want pro prohibition or not mm -hmm. but so but, ha, let, let me let me get in sudesh here speak on that how are you really reaching out to the tribals and and the pockets which have been alienated uh, by the state government so far how are you really uh, uh, you know garnering their confidence at this point of time you see nexalism is a very big issue in chatisgarh and it has come down no doubt about that uh, now less incidents of violence have happen if i give you a figure then from 2005 onwards 3000 people have died in naxal violence you see congress used naxal as an excuse not to take development they said naxals were not allowed but we have taken development to the naxal hubs roads are there now development is taking place that is why you see you talk of bastar talk of other areas you will find that happening our approach we don't consider them revolutionary if you consider them revolutionary and if you give the ideological support which we call urban naxals sitting in the five star uh, hotel That's or five star correct. room let me let me speak my mind you can have a different yeah. opinion i do have uh, different to large section of society believes what i'm saying uh, no, I'm and I these people we, we, we these, get in one by one these, yeah. these people these people defend naxalism they don't go themselves it is the tribal who are suffering tribal were suffering and when the state goes with a benevolent approach why should they be there that is why you see the nationalism ha has come down there was a salwa judu movement which was people led movement and that human rights wallas created a huge sort of hangama salwa judu ji is mahinder karma belong to congress but he worked in perfect harmony with the state government and then he led that movement so not the state government doing so so uh, you you cannot adopt different yardstick you see anyone who takes gun whether you take because of uh, poverty whether you take because Nobody's you want to them. islamize you know whatever the ideology is Nobody's if you take gun them. against the state the state cannot sit silent because the state has to give protection to innocent citizen to common people of the country and that is what uh, chatisgarh government has done no, but at the moment with the vision document which has come out how are you really uh, garnering the support of the tribals who all this what while have felt alienated modi ji has said this vikas that is the only way okay. you take development there you take road there you take industries there which already is no, a process which is already you happening you go to chatisgarh is not the same chatisgarh you know 15 years back what chatisgarh you go now and see what is happening why nationalism has come down there are people ready to surrender so they don't they want to join the ministry but if you give okay. an ideological support we you call urban nexus right. sitting in the five star room and you try to then you are not doing something good for okay. the society okay aditi i think i'll i'll come to you prana aditi you want to say something firstly on this? i take deep objection to this whole idea that there is an urban nexus and that they sit in five star hotels uh, i'm assuming that the 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 references to the four people who are currently in uh, in judicial custody uh, one of at least one of whom i know personally and i know sudha bhardwaj in the work she's done in chatisgarh so it is totally wrong completely wrong to say that she sits in five star hotels and she does not even have no, an I'm air conditioner so i don't want to get into the you details of this she is, she is named as one of the people among I'm our nurses if even one so. reference is wrong then all references are wrong i'm sorry to say that no, secondly no i know i come from jnu i can tell you secondly uh, the, this together to a gang 
the what no, do no, they do no, no, please I, 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 they are just defending the naxals i don't think what to happened to the intolerant I india brigade do you support the intolerant india brigade do you support the intolerant india brigade do you we have so many other points to talk about the vision document which has come out by the two i don't agree with this i know sudha bhardwaj i know her work i know others who have whom she has helped and I do not believe for one minute, and neither will the people of. But if you okay, if you supply no, no, no. logistic support okay, to anyone so involved answer, in armed rebellion, you are reaching out to the tribals and the alienated population through development, right? Yes. So, of course. what are the new things which the vision document has offered to the tribals? Why would the tribals we go ahead offered, now and vote for BJP? We have offered rapid industrialization. We have offered uh, interest-free loans to women. We believe that if women are empowered. then lot of things can be done we are giving insurance of up to 5 lakh for smaller businessmen it gives a lot of sense of security to them okay and of course all the tribal schemes you know uh, which are there the central government that is going whatever the central scheme is there you that is like what lagu one sampatti and yes. all, all, all these uh, the, schemes see, which are already it's there the forest right issue was there in 2008 okay congress tried to defame us you know uh, and that is why in 2013 uh, we got really less number of seats uh tribal seats we lost some tribal seats because of that because on forest rights implementation was a little late but now that is not an issue right. tribal are with us there is no problem at all but uh, pranav what i want to yeah. ask you is that the entire focus of the congress uh, vision document is is on farmers the fa- the, the loan waivers is is on the agricultural sector but what are you uh, what is the what is the offer which you have given to the aspirational uh, chatisgarh for example say bjp is coming up with a film city they have proposed a film city then it's it's like a forward looking document which they have offered so for the aspirational chatisgarh what are you really uh, offering we are saying that it will be people's government it will okay. not be a political party's government it will not be narendra modi's government it will be people's government people who participate in franchise people who vote and elect a government and but that's what very, bjp is also saying I'm, bjp no, is incorporating the, the I, entire population i could have i could have dismissed that question by saying that they have already done it for 15 years and w- what you see is is i mean there's nothing new for them because they have already run their course so they can't be saying that i will do this because why didn't you do it you could have done it earlier what your promises from past remain unfulfilled the course of the election is very evident from the way the prime minister is campaigning there you see he is not talking about development in his speeches if you look he is not talking about jobs he he is he is not talking about tribal tribal rights what he is trying to do he is trying to try, try, try uh, talking about trying to talk about what is called this new term called urban naxals imaginary enemies as we speak no, no, in this he, discussion he does say the development point. is the Nearly. only answer to all the problems in very vaguely very vaguely he, he has repeatedly emphasized it so important important so let sudesh come up this and i'll come to you urban naxal yes. statement came he spoke after, so much on this after congress leader said that naxals were revolutionaries our party That's president incorrect. has also spoken it was in that context so you that is you say something that we give an ideological fight and you That's say that incorrect. we should not be saying that i, I don't want to have an I, ideological I fight on this to, program i wanted to summarize the election as we speak here my friend is here and and uh, aditi uh, the witness is that as we speak there is uh, chief minister adityanath speaking there saying you know what is what is he talking in bastar he is saying ki ram mandir banna chahiye bhavya aur iski jo sabse badi virodhi ho congress party hai So where are what are you talking about manifesto you think BJP these, is these talking about Ram Mandir like and even Rahul Gandhi is visiting temple so let's Guru not Dwaras. only BJP campaigning campaigning about Ram Mandir no no i don't so want to get saying, into this it's see priorities are clear right rahul gandhi is talking about corruption he is talking about both bjp and congress are the same he is talking about rafael he is talking about pds scam he is saying that 30, 60 people have died in chitfund uh, chitfund scam there have been th- 310 fias there no one no one arrested no one arrested you my final so i'm saying so wait before i take the final comments see, from uh, we Aditi. strongly believe that why anti incumbency did not work against dr raman singh for 15 years three terms please hold on let it hold it hold it let it be told you the whole difference let me complete i'll come to less than what was complete if there is a government if there is a government that is working and people also believe that the government is working and they see that vision translating into action people have no reason to vote against the government that Now, is precisely my question to you pranav That's the bjp already has offered a successful model of development now congress was in power just for 3 years 
and that too the memories are far behind so why would the voter of chatisgarh today go ahead and place all its trust in congress give me one good reason uh, and then i come because, to uh, aditi because congress has governed this country they have been in power many times and they know what they stand for my leader goes and asks i have been in politics for 15 years tell me one promise that i have made and i have not fulfilled it people there want change it does not matter to them to them no, who is the, the chief minister no but the way they are working on the ground in chatisgarh is that bjp is offering a successful model which they do not want any more you the, are saying this people are saying that okay people are saying okay. that so now. let let aditi have the last word on this well uh, i remember some years ago that uh, an ips officer in of the chatisgarh cadre committed suicide and in his suicide note he said he was fed up at the way the administration and the chief minister's office was forcing him to extort money now that was a very damaging indictment on the whole uh, administration you have to consider that also in addition to all the good things that the raman singh government has done you have to consider that also you have to consider that there are still people who are uh, seen as uh, enemies of tribals who are seen as people who uh, uh, just want to exploit and extort from the tribals and you also have to have to see that uh, th there is a system by which uh, tribal land the tribal feels that his land is not safe so now it seems in jharkhand it's it's a problem and i think that uh, despite all the good things that the raman singh administration has done which is why as sudesh says they've been repeatedly elected by the people uh these things have to be addressed more carefully and much more uh, discerningly by the administration manifesto or no manifesto okay so i i'm sure lots of work uh, still uh, needs to be done on the ground but well the manifesto or the vision document or the vision of intent is out at the end of the first phase of campaigning in chatisgarh all eyes now would be on when the voting process begins and who will ultimately head the 90 member assembly our election programming on our battleground series will continue on rajya sabha tv from all the poll bound states getting you an incisive and in-depth coverage of the issues and the voices from the ground you can send us your feedback on youtube and facebook i thank all my guests aditi fadnis pranav jha and sudesh uh, for making a uh, for making a lively uh, discussion on rajya sabha television goodbye and thanks for your time Thank